Hey everyone, I'm Danny and welcome to Wizardry Workshop. Shout out to Jam City for sponsoring this video. If you haven't played Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery, you should. You should download it using my link in the description box. It's a very fun game. Also a reminder, just in case anybody missed it, I am giving away five of these custom foiled Hogwarts identity cards. And all you have to do is download Hogwarts Mystery using my link and play it at least up until uh, chapter seven of year one. Screenshot the, the screen when you make it there or past there, tag me on the image on Instagram or Twitter and you will be entered for your chance to win one of five. Today's video is special. I created a game, like a whole game uh, for witches and wizards. It's based off of like this this old uh, game that uses a spinner. The game is called Whirl O Wizard and it has a spinner in the middle and an arrow in the middle. And this is gonna be a fun game. Be warned, if you play, there will be shenanigans. My idea for this, and like I said, I took inspiration from uh, like a vintage game that used a spinner like this, but I kind of thought of it as like the magical wizarding world's uh, answer to like Jumanji or Zathura, like anything that you land on would actually happen. But I made it in a way where you can play it and just kind of pretend that it's happening. There are little stunts you have to perform in between turns and it's, it's, gonna, be, it's gonna be mayhem. So we're gonna go ahead and DIY this game board with the spinner and everything. And then we're gonna go over, there are two different rule sets for this game. So we'll go over both. The difference is one of them uses a 20-sided die and the board, and that's it. And that is the free version, which you can download and play. And then the other one has different rules, doesn't use dice, but it uses a custom deck of cards, which I created specifically for this game. That's enough blabbering from me. Go ahead and check out the description box down below for a list of all the supplies you're gonna need to make this DIY, as well as the free downloadable template and let's get started. First, of course, we need to print the templates. So here is the board for Whirl O Wizard, a luck and misfortune game. This is double-sided on 11 by 17 cardstock. The back side of it has all the rules. So there are two rule sets. I'll go over both, but for now, let's just get this made. First, we've got to cut this out. I've included a few different ways you can do that. So one, here's a little template. You can just kind of clamp, line these up, clamp them together and cut along these lines and your board is done. However, it's gonna be really difficult to get this tiny little circle in there. So I'm using my Cricut. If you'd like a Cricut tutorial, my previous video that goes over the Hogwarts ID card, I do have a section in there where I go over how to use the Cricut and how I set things up. I'll link to that in the description box so you can take a look at it. So here's our backboard, pretty simple. Next we have a spinner. This file is like this. I also have a template similar to this to cut this one out. There's a hole in the middle and it cuts out in a circle. This is the spinner we're gonna put on our backboard. I've already cut mine out with the Cricut, so we'll just peel this off. Yes, this mat was used in the past to cut out my Star Wars Sabacc deck. So now we have our spinner circle. We have our board. They both have holes in the middle. Next thing we need is a little plastic arrow spinner. It comes with two pieces. I will link this in the description box so you can uh, get the same one that I got because this template is sized to fit this piece exactly. So the back piece of the spinner just goes through that little hole and then our cardboard spinner circle goes on top and then the arrow finally snaps in and now we're ready to go. Let's go over the board real quick so that you understand what is happening here. There is a circular spinner that has the numbers from one to 20 and a little orange arrow on it right here. There is also a plastic spinner on top of that that spins and can land on those numbers. The circular spinner spins and lands on either a witch or a wizard's head all the way around, and their hats are pointing to little stunts that you need to perform. In the dice version of the game, whenever it says something about fortunes, just ignore that and try to do the stunt because the fortunes are used in the other rule set of the game. The hectic craziness about this game is that regardless of whether you're playing 
with the rule set that uses cards or the 20 sided die. If you're doing a stunt, the game continues as you do it. So if you see your stunt, you see your number, and then you decide to try your stunt out, the next person, as you're doing the stunt, goes ahead. So at this minute, you could be out for looking for a bug, a frog, a cat, or an animal to collect. This person spun, and now they have to babble on until they can't stop. So they start babbling while you're doing that, and then the next person spins, and then they have to go blind until the next turn. So then the next person spins. So everybody's doing something crazy as it goes. And it could get a little confusing and hectic. So if it does start to get hard to track as you're doing that, you can pause and wait till somebody finishes their task and then uh, continue on. At this point, let's go over rule set one. So you'll need the spinner and you'll also need a 20-sided die. If you don't have a 20-sided die, there are apps that you can get on your phone to roll a 20-sided die. I've used a Magic the Gathering app that keeps track of like life total and it allows you to roll a dice. Can't remember what it's called, but you know, just look up Magic the Gathering dice roller or D&D dice roller or something. So you've got your 20-sided die, you've got your DIY game set up, so all we need to do is spin this bottom wheel pretty fast. This arrow's supposed to move too. There we go. All right, now they're both moving. You see that the black arrow here landed on three, and then this other little yellow arrow that's on the cardboard wheel landed right here. Now at this point, there is a stunt that the person who spun the wheel has to do. It says, upon you is a silent spell, but in five minutes you'll be well. Meaning, you can't say a word for five minutes. But since we landed on the number three with the plastic arrow, what we're trying to do is roll a three. So you roll your 20-sided die. It's a 20-sided die because there are 20 numbers around the wheel. I rolled a 10, so that means I have to do the stunt. If I had rolled a three, I wouldn't have to do the stunt. To make it easier to roll the right number, like if you're getting frustrated or like you wanna just make the game a little bit easier, you can roll you can like say everybody has three chances or something to roll the right number. So I rolled a 10, I rolled a five, and I rolled a 14. So I can't talk for the next five minutes. The chances of actually rolling the right number, if you roll three times per turn, I believe it's one in seven. So it's not it wouldn't be that hard. You will get your number once in a while, but most of the time you're gonna be doing the stunt. Now, when it comes to doing the stunt, if you can't do the stunt or you fail at doing the stunt, you get a misfortune mark. Basically, you just need a piece of paper with the player's names on them, and every time somebody fails at a stunt, they get a tally mark. So, Ron's probably got like five or six by now. Hermione has zero and Harry probably has three. But anyways, before you start the game, you decide how many marks you can have before you're disqualified. So let's say you said six. So now Ron is out of the game. Hermione and Harry then have to keep spinning until somebody else gets six marks. And then Hermione would be the winner. So it's basically like Battle Royale last person standing wins the game. But there's other things on here. This one says, on the floor you must play dead until another does instead. So that one, <laughs> you have to actually lay down dead on the floor until somebody else rolls or spins and gets that and then you swap places with them. Kind of fun. I thought of all these rhymes except for one of them. And all the rules I just went over is also on the back of your uh, spin board. Now let's get into the part that I find the most exciting. And that is the second rule set, which uses a deck of cards. Um, you can purchase these on my Etsy shop. So if you want to make your spin board and play with the advanced rule set, I am selling these cards. And I'm also selling the completely put together board so if you buy it from me, this is what it's gonna look like. It'll be packaged just like this. You'll get a deck of 62 cards, as well as the board. And on the back of this one has the alternative rule sets. Each one is individually made. These are not mass produced. The deck is called the fortune deck, and each card is referred to as a fortune. So if you see in these stunts, if it refers to a fortune, it's talking about a card. For example, 
This one here says, walk and talk like you've grown old till all the fortunes have been told, which means you have to pretend you're walking and talking like you're really old until all the cards have been gone through. So basically until the end of the game. There are three different types of cards in the deck. I've separated them out right here for you. One type of card is a luck card. It has the little icon face of a little wizard here. Each one is represented by a different planet. One of them is represented by a star, and then they each have a lucky number. There are 20 of these in the deck. The next type of card is basically the opposite of the luck card. It's the misfortune card. It has a skull in the corner rather than a wizard. They are also represented by the same planets and star, and they also have a lucky number. Again, there are 20 of these in the deck. And the third type of card is tarot cards. Just a major arcana from uh, the Rider Waite tarot deck. We have all 21 of those plus the Fool. These you will collect throughout the game, and at the very end of the game, if you want to, you can look up the meanings of the cards and get your own little tarot reading. Also at the end of the game, luck cards that you've collected in your hand are all worth one point each. Misfortune cards you've collected are all worth minus one point each. And tarot cards you've collected are all worth two points each. Except for the Fool. The Fool is worth zero points, but if there is a tie at the end between you and any number of other players, and you have the Fool, you win. It's a tiebreaker card. However, if you are the winner at the end of the game, meaning you have the most points, but you have the fool in your hand still, you lose five points from your total. So it's kind of a double-edged sword there. But there is a way to get rid of the fool if you don't want to take your chances, and that is if you spin and there's a stunt you don't want to do, you can discard the fool to skip that stunt completely. The smaller amount of players you're going to play with, you probably want to remove some cards, take away a few of the luck and misfortune cards because you play until the deck is gone. So the smaller amount of cards in the deck, the faster the game is going to go. Now to play with the advanced rule set, you need to shuffle your Whirl of Wizard cards. The cards are very smooth. So as you can see, you can riffle shuffle. I mean, there's no problem there. So the game starts by dealing five cards to each person playing. I'm going to pretend that I'm playing with three other people, so we'll deal out five cards to each person. Now once everybody has a hand of five, we'll take the deck, place it there in the middle next to the board, and we're ready to go. You can decide who goes first any way you want. It doesn't matter whoever's youngest, or you could roll a dice, or something like that. Whatever you want to do. In my hand, I got a lucky card with lucky number four. I got a tarot card, I got uh, lucky number 20, I got a misfortune card with number 5, um, another misfortune with 14, and another misfortune with 12. So the object of the game, obviously, is to keep hold of your tarot cards and your lucky cards and get rid of your misfortune cards. Here's how we do that. Let's say I'm going first, so I'm going to spin the wheel. If it lands like this, like it's pointing directly in between two different things, you just spin again. And you do this until both arrows uh, are actually pointing at something. A cauldron you'll pretend to stir until your next turn does occur. So I'd have to pretend I'm holding a cauldron and stirring it um, while everybody else goes. And I can't stop until my next turn. And then I also landed on number nine with the black arrow. Now I have three choices. I can either just go ahead and do the stunt, and once I finish and successfully complete the stunt, I am allowed to draw another card. And you can have as many cards in your hand as you want. Or, if I have the number nine somewhere, which I don't, but let's just pretend I do. So if I have the number nine on a luck card, I probably want to just go ahead and do the stunt and keep my luck card because it's worth points at the end of the game. However, if I have, let's say this is a number nine, if I had a number nine on a misfortune card, that would be the perfect opportunity because I can discard my number nine so everybody can see it and I get to draw a card. So I get to skip the stunt and draw a card if I have the lucky number. The third option, which you probably don't want to do, is <laughs> 
skip the stunt. So if you say, I'm not doing that, you're going to skip the stunt. That means you shuffle your hand and you let somebody take a card and put it in the discard pile at random. So if I said, I'm not doing that stunt, go ahead, take a card. In this case, it worked out for me because it's a misfortune card, but it could have been my tarot card or it could have been my luck cards. Next person is their turn and play just continues that way. You can either play a timed game, like you could set a timer for an hour or something or a half hour and play until the timer goes off to see who can collect the most points, or you can just play until the cards are gone and then whatever's left in your hands, that's what you got. So we're just gonna pretend we did that. I'm just gonna do like a mock end of game. I've just put a bunch of cards here as if they've been discarded. Um, and then we're going to give everybody a few, a little bit of the deck. And we're gonna pretend we played until all the cards had been gone through. And there are 62 cards. I'd probably do this while I was playing and separate them into, here's my tarot cards. Um, here's my misfortune cards. And then here are my luck cards. That's what I would do. I'd count how many luck cards I have. One, two, three, four, five luck cards. So that means I have five points so far, but then my misfortune cards minus a point. One, two, three, four. So that's five minus four. I have one point left. And then we get into the tarot cards. So two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, eight, twenty. Wow. I got almost half the tarot cards. That probably wouldn't happen. It just happened because I randomly gave cards out. But anyways, that means I end with 21 points. I do not have the Fool, but I have 10 tarot cards I can look up the meaning of, and that will be my tarot reading at the end of the game. The person next to me got one, two, three points. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. So at negative four, and then two, four, that brings me back up to zero and two, four. They got four points. The last player gets one, two, three, four, five points minus one, two, three, four, five, which brings them back to zero points. One, two, three, negative three points. And then we've got the tarot cards, two, four, six, eight. So they got five points and the fool in this case does nothing because it's worth zero, we didn't tie, and they didn't have the most points. It can be in their tarot reading now. So everybody who played gets a little tarot reading at the end of the game. I hope I explained that well. I hope you guys understood the rules. If not, they are all written on the back of this game board. Let me know what you think of this DIY. It was super fun to like, put together a whole game and come up with all these little rhymes and like think of all the rules. Very fun to do. Also very time consuming on top of doing the design. So this took a really long time to complete and I hope that you guys really like it. If you've made it with me all the way to the end of the video, you're a wizard Harry. Go ahead and hit the thumbs up down below if you like the video. Subscribe if you're not already. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.